Okay, I'll just click start webinar. Oh, it's done. Yeah. So yeah, as of five seconds, everything we say will be broadcast. So. <laughs> right. All right. So, okay. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. I want to show my screen. So I'm just going to share my screen. Oh, sharing screen has been disabled. Yeah, we can see your screen now, Hardy. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, thank you, everyone. So, um, yeah, shall we start? Or how many attendees do we have now? I think, um, yeah, I think we're cool. So, all right. So, um, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, today we are going to go through a workshop about the how we can automate CIS compliance by using Bolt, which is our Puppet agentless automation. Um, so my name is Hardy. Um, Hardy Chow. I'm a senior sales engineer for Puppet Singapore, and this is my email address. And yeah, together with me, I have Tony Green. Uh, Tony Green is the moderator for the session. Tony, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, as Hardy said, I'm uh, SE in Sydney. Um, and I'll be sort of lurking around in the background trying to help if there any uh, any issues crop up. All right, cool. So moving on, so a uh, couple of housekeeping. So uh, if you get stuck or you have any uh, problems, technical problems, uh, you can just uh, you know write your questions in the Q&A section uh, chat box so that uh, Tony um, uh, or, I, uh, or me can help you to you know fix your issues. And if you're using a uh, corporate laptops, probably you want to switch off first from your VPN. And we are recording this workshop, and we will share this recording by email after the session. OK, a um, couple of things here. You can download the slide decks from this uh, URL. Um, and then the Git workshop repo is all available here as well. Um, I'd also suggest you to download the, the Linux uh, private key file so that you can log into the, all the boxes that we're going to use for the uh, workshop later on. Right. So and I think that's about it. Right. Yeah. So uh, the agenda for today is uh, first off, uh, we're going to run through a couple of like uh, introductions or to Bolt, like what is Bolt about, like uh, how to install Bolt, <clears throat> how to download, and how to configure the Bolt inventory file. And we're also going to uh, you know, uh, look at the use case of an uh, imaginary co uh, company called Acme Corporation uh, as a sysadmin and how we can you know, use Bolt to automate the CS compliance. And we're going to learn uh, how to use Bolt to check for the CIS controls, fix the settings for CIS controls, and uh, how to use it in a more mature and more automated ways. And then uh, finally, we're going to have like some wrap up and Q&A at the end of the session. So that's the uh, agenda for this workshop. All right. So um, okay. 
So why CIS? So CIS, uh, it stands for Center of Internet Security. Um, it's uh, organizations that uh, identify and develop best practice solutions for cyber defense, particularly in the hardening uh, benchmarks. So uh, they've created a bunch of uh, CIS controls and benchmarks across uh, different operating systems, uh, middleware, uh, databases, and all that, which provides you standards uh, for the internet security. And a lot of the companies um, globally, they recognize uh, CIS as a global standard, and it's actually a best practices to secure your IT systems. And a little bit more about CIS benchmark, it also provides you with a framework that helps organizations to you know, improve their security posture. So um, how can you uh, use Bolt to help you in terms of uh, CS compliance? All right, so uh, Bolt is an uh, automation tool. It is agentless, which means that uh, you do not need to install any kind of like agents um, in your estate. We just need to open up um, ports like uh, SSH for Linux nodes and WinRM for Windows, so uh, for infrastructure management. And a bolt can also help you to ensure that you're compliant with the CIS uh, benchmarks, and that will make your organizations much more secure. So that's uh, what CIS is all about. All right, so uh, next, moving on, uh, why is bolt? So bolt, um, as I mentioned, earlier it is our uh, agentless automation tool so you can run any of these items on demand for example like commands uh, like your bash commands um, powershell commands or it can also run scripts in any kind of languages as long as your nodes have uh, the compilers for example if you have java or golang scripts you can run that uh, using bolt as well and uh, lastly we're gonna talk uh, about like uh, what's bold tasks and plans plans are. So tasks are actually scripts uh, with a couple of metadata, and plans are actually a sequence of uh, tasks that you run in a like a workflow kind of uh, format. So um, you can run bold uh, with or without an agent. Um, so without an agent, that will be primarily through SSH or WinRM. With an agent, uh, you it will go through a protocol called PCP, which is a public communication protocol, right? So um, it will allow you also to define your overall automation story. Um, and, you know, we design the bold commands to grow from like running uh, simple commands like bash commands, PowerShell commands, and then um, move you through the, you know, uh, how you can create scripts based on that. And then like convert those scripts into a task, like bold tasks and plans or you can use also a mixture of a puppet language, uh, puppet code, um, you know, whatever it makes the most sense. So uh, in Puppet Enterprise, together with Bolt, uh, you can set up a rule-based access control to make sure that like uh, certain groups of users have the right access to uh, the nodes that you have. And you can also use the uh, Puppet Enterprise console or dashboard for more centralized operations where you can see things at a high level. Um, also, you can get the logs, uh, audit uh, histories, and all those kind of informations from uh, PE console or PE uh, dashboard. Um, it also allows you to you know, schedule tasks for, for, um, for example, you want to do patching uh, at midnight, or you want to do patching during like um, weekends where um, you, you, I mean, uh, it's unattended. Uh, operations. So that's uh, those are the list of things that you can do with Bolt. All right, so um, moving on, so why Bolt and CIS? Um, so Bolt is, uh, why is it that uh, is relevant for CIS? Um, you can trust, but you verify, so uh, testing whether your, your report is still accurate. Um, you test uh, for one or two nodes, and then you scale it to the rest of the uh, estate, um, your infra. And okay, so this is uh, some of the um, types of the bolt subcommands. So as you can see, um, commands. This is a syntax of uh, how you can run those uh, bolt commands. 
Um, scripts are basically um, you, you just uh, need to type like bold script run and then fill in the uh, script name and then um, fill in the targets as well. So uh, these are the kind of like formats on how you can run the commands, scripts, uh, bold tasks, and plans. Right. So um, bold also has um, other sub commands like apply um, for applying puppet code and file for uploading and downloading file. But uh, we'll just focus on uh, these items, these four items first. And you can take, uh, you can run the bolt, uh, that's, that's help to see the full list of uh, sub commands that you can run for bolt. Um, okay, moving on, uh, first exercise, we'll go and install bolt. All right, so, um, Okay, so uh, first exercise, uh, you can go to the GitHub uh, repo to take a look at uh, the steps required for you to install Bolt. You can install Bolt on your uh, Mac or your Windows, uh, your Linux machine, I believe. And, you know, so um, once you're done with the installations, you can verify, you, you can open up your like shell, PowerShell or, um, like a uh, bash shells, and then you can type like bolt that's that version to verify that you've actually successfully installed the bolt. And yeah, so I'm just gonna give everyone time to install bolt. So if you have problems installing um, Bolt, uh, you can type in the chat box and um, get some help from Tony or me. Oops. Mm. 
All right, so um, does anyone, um, everyone finish installing the bowl? Or still um, doing installation? So I'm just going to upload another one. Oops. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we'll assume everyone's got it installed now, and if there's any problems, just shout out on the uh, on the chat, and we'll we'll get moving. All right, cool. Um, so moving on to the next one, organizing bold content. Um, so there are a couple of ways how you can manage your. Um, or rather organize your bold content. So these are the structures of how you can organize your bold manifest tasks or plans. And 
yeah so you just uh, need to create a module um, name and then like uh, create a sub uh, directories inside like a manifest plans or tasks and then um, create those manifest plans and tasks and then like put those uh, files inside these uh, directories so uh, this particular method enables you to um, enables other uh, puppet enterprise users to ac access your bold content so it's more like a shared content uh, and in your puppet file you can you can uh, you have to like add the, the list of additional modules that uh, this particular task plans depend on so that uh, the both um, plans and tasks can uh, be executed so um, organizing content by using both projects um, out of the box uh, it allows you both allows you to run ad hoc commands like uh, for example uh, ping or like restarting services and so on and it has like a, some built-in uh, tasks like service package and fax where you can run them um, like on particularly Linux machines. And uh, both projects are standalone content. Uh, you can install it in your laptop. And the puppet file in your both project directories, uh, you know, it uh, allows you to list all the dependencies that uh, that both those both tasks and plans that uh, depend on. So uh, it's decentralized from. Uh, uh, traditional Puppet Enterprise because it has its own Puppet file. And you can import uh, into both projects any of the, you know, we have about like more than 6,500 uh, Puppet models on our Forge, uh, forge.puppet.com. So you can download that, uh, the modules. Uh, it could, can be like a task plan or uh, Puppet uh, traditional code from the Forge. And then use that in your both projects. All right, so uh, we uh, moving on to the second exercise, um, downloading the Bolt project. So um, yeah, you just need to clone and download the Bolt projects, and then place it into a directory um, and where you like to extract it to, and then rename it to Bolt Bolt Shop. Uh, all lowercase, and then you open up a terminal and go to that particular directory. So after you've done that, you can run both task show just to verify that you have the task that um, start off with the uh, compliance uh, semicolon, semicolon.
one thing you may notice with the uh, the bolt directories is, uh, especially if you're familiar with Puppet, um, over the, the 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 months, Puppet's uh, influence can be feel, felt very strongly on the uh, the contents of the the bolt directory. We're starting to uh, converge those more than a little, which uh, which does make adoption a little bit easier if you're familiar with um, you know, the layout and the, the structure of a, pup, uh, a standard control repo or module. All right, so um, I hope everyone's done with the downloading of the or cloning the Vault workshop. So I'm just gonna share my screen and show that it's done. So just share screen. Right, uh, so I have. So CD downloads uh, bolt shop. So if I just run bolt uh, plan show, uh, I should be able to see that uh, I have a couple of plans that start off with compliance semicolons. So this is how it's going to look like uh, when you run the bolt plan show. You may see if you're Bolt users already um, or have been you know, messing around with Bolt in previous workshops, you may see other stuff in there as well. Right, so uh, so let's um, move on to the next uh, slide um, review. So uh, what we have done so far is that uh, we have downloaded a project from GitHub. Right, so. Um, all the dependencies are included for today's workshop. It's everything is in that particular folder. And you can use the, the content outside of this uh, environment as well. You can just uh, try it at home as well. Um, moving on to the next, uh, Bolt projects. Um, so this is the structure of a Bolt project. So um, as you can see, the first one is bolt-project.yaml. Uh, so this contains like a specific Project kind of like metadata, like uh, the name, you know, whether it's public and private tasks and uh, so on. Inventory that YAML, it's a list of your servers or your nodes and uh, the connection settings such as uh, SSH or WinRAM and things like that. Uh, puppet file, these are all your dependencies, the list of modules, um, you know. Uh, from Puppet Forge or the modules that if you created yourself. So uh, all the modules are downloaded to the local modules folder. Um, unless specify as local, yep. So um, modules folder contains all the Puppet Forge modules or custom modules that you've built. And you can refer that to the Puppet file that contains a list of modules. Uh, so you have like task plans uh, that contains uh, both tasks and both plans. And files basically contains all all the web server content. So, uh, so the first one, this is the inventory.yaml. So, uh, as you can see on the right hand side, so uh, basically we created an inventory uh, or rather a group of uh, nodes called Windows. And then under this Windows contains all the Windows boxes that you have currently. So, it also describes like how you're gonna connect to this. Um, Windows nodes, it's gonna be through WinRM. And you will specify whether it's uh, like, what's the user and what's the password and uh, all the configuration options such as uh, SSL, whether it's uh, SSL to WinRM or, 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 or not. Right, so um, moving on to the third exercise, um, how we can manage the inventory.yaml. 
Um, so first off, we will edit the inventory.yaml, and then uh, we'll replace the um, host name with uh, your assigned student number. Um, I think the spreadsheet, you can refer to the spreadsheet in the handout, uh, handout I think in the files that I've given. So I'll just get to the slides. So, um, so, so. If you look in the uh, the handouts tab on the uh, the chat, the the um, Google sheet should be linked there. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah. So, um, right. So these are the assigned uh, Windows and Linux machines for uh, all of you, uh, including the VM uh, login as well. So just go back to yeah. So um, so Michelle test the connection to the host. So we are gonna run this uh, connection to the host. Just one. One second, Ryan. I'll just post that in the chat if that's okay. So I'll just share my screen, show how it's done. Um, all right, so I have inventory.yaml. Right, so I'm just gonna edit the uh, windows with the uh, nodes that I'm assigned to. So this will be secure bolt uh, win zero for me. And for the Linux will be secure bolt mix zero. There you go, I posted that in the chat. Um, I would try and read it out, but you know, it's a Google Docs uh, link. Um, just let me know if you can access that.
Yeah, so this is how it's gonna look like after you successfully run the command bold command run post name uh, target equals all. You will need to download the bold key private private key and then uh, put that in your bold shop folder. Um, if you're using Linux or Mac OS, then probably you need to do some um, changes to the permission. So once you've done that, you can run this uh, command, bold, bold command, run hostname, st all. And you'll see that um, uh, it's uh, it'll be a successful run. So basically what this does is um, it's running a, a command line called host name in both uh, Windows and Linux. Any questions so far, or um, has anyone uh, hit uh, an error for the on this exercise number three, or everyone is good? Unknown transport HTTP. Uh, uh, Ryan, could you like paste your um, error message? To yeah, the... there shouldn't be a transport HTTP in there anyway. A transport should either be WinRM or SSH. Um, Ryan, if you could just um, give us a, a, a view of your um, inventory.yaml file, that that would help. Adi, can you just share the screen and show uh, Ryan your inventory YAML? Sure. Um, so um, I'm just going to inventory the YAML. Yeah, so um, this is how I set up my inventory YAML. So basically, I just changed the URI, uh, the host name, to the one that uh, you're assigned to. So for me, it's uh, zero. So secure bolt uh, win zero for Windows. For Linux, will be secure bolt uh, next zero. And the rest um, stays the same. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff in the uh, the inventory file that you can do. We wouldn't necessarily recommend all of this stuff as um, uh, a, a, as best practice for a production environment. Things like SSL false and SSH you know, using run as root and um, not checking your host keys and um, embedding passwords and things like that. But uh, yeah, for for a workshop, this is a great demo. But um, 
yeah, from productionizing the use of uh, of Bolt, there's a lot more you can do as well. It's not authenticating the link schools. So Ryan, um, what permissions did you put on that uh, that file? Um, it being as it's a, an SSH key, it should be um, read, it's a, effectively 600 for your user. I just made sure it's in the in the bolt directory, um, the bolt shop directory as well. Okay, all good now. Cool. All right. So um, I think uh, um, I hope everyone has uh, finished this exercise. So let's uh, move on to the next one. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll have a break of uh, five minutes. Uh, see everyone in five minutes time.
you know, we should actually do Hardy. I'm not sure if you're there, but everyone else might be. We should actually have a bulk command which sets up all of this stuff and downloads the repo and everything else, and then we become effectively self-aware because then we'd need to write another bulk command to run that first bulk command and we'd get all in trouble. But yeah, we might get there in the end. All right. Um, I hope everyone's back. Oh, we have new attendees. So, uh, moving on. Uh, now we are gonna run um, like a scenario uh, use case of uh, how we can use Bolt to actually enforce the CIS compliance. Um, so uh, we have a like a imaginary company here called Acme Corp. Um, then uh, you are the sys admin for this uh, corporation, and uh, this Acme Corporation just uh, landed a huge new customer, which uh, they require the uh, your company to you know be CIS compliant, and um, you will have to verify. The this with the an audit. So uh, you as a sysadmin have been tasked uh, with a job to ensure that uh, all of your ACME systems are CIS compliant. So uh, and we are gonna use Bolt to make sure that uh, everything is uh, CIS compliant. So um, there are three tasks here that uh, we need to address. So first off, uh, you need to check the state of all your systems. Making sure that uh, you know uh, at least uh, the state is uh, up and running, and um, the the second task here that uh, you need to automate um, how you're gonna do the remediations of uh, those uh, that's uh, non-compliant uh, settings. So first off, you, you check the state of your compliance. The second task is you automate the fixing of those the configurations that not compliant, and finally uh, you will find an easier way. Um, uh, rather more automated way to fix those non-compliance settings. And uh, we're going to use Bolt for each of uh, these tasks. Okay, so uh, the first task, um, right, so it's it's going to be that uh, we're checking the state of the compliance for our systems, right? So um, you discover that there are some of the CS controls that we need to comply. Um, so things like, uh, you know, making sure that the minimum password age must be at least uh, seven days, um, as well as uh, disabling the SSH root login. 
and um, you know need to ensure that FTP must not be enabled and you know for proper permissions. So Linux must be set for the bootloader. Um, you must settings at least twenty seven, and uh, for Windows it could be like uh, many uh, policy settings. So um, first off, uh, checking the compliance state of your systems using both. Um, so uh, you can run this following commands against the uh, Linux nodes. So um, if you can just run it um, in your machine, so I'll run it on my screen here. So, so that's uh, exercise number four. So I just paste uh, Adi, can you increase the font size a little bit on your, your term? Uh, okay. uh, oops. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. All right. So, um, yeah. So here we, we see that, uh, that uh, the minimum days can't be set to zero. But, and we will run the rest of the compliance settings, uh, or rather compliance state checking. So um, at least seven, so uh, we kind of like uh, at least seven, we don't really need this. And we need to check whether the root login is disabled just by running this command. So again, uh, Okay, so um, apparently it, this is also, um, they allow us to log in using root. So this is not compliant. And we are gonna run the third command, which is to check whether the FTP package is installed or not. So run this. Well, uh, this is uninstalled, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, could you please try to run those uh, three commands on your Linux nodes, and let us know if you have uh, any issues. So uh, moving on, we can also um, run the following scripts to check uh, the file permissions of the bootloader, as well as the UMAS to be you know set to 077. So I'll just show you how we do it. So I'm just gonna copy this and run it. This is really where where bolt starts to get 
fun. Um, obviously, just doing bulk command run. It's you know, it, on one machine, it's not that different to, to doing an SSH, a remote SSH command. You can even for loop it. But um, when you start doing things like bulk script run, um, that gives you the ability to copy that script up to the remote host um, and execute it and then clean it up again afterwards. So it, it becomes a lot easier to, to start automating this stuff. Um, if, if, for, for the sysadmins amongst us, uh, many a time you've copied, you know, ended up copying a script up to the remote host and tried to execute it and capture the output in a, some sort of same way. Um, this does give you a really nice way of doing it. Sure. Okay. So um, we can also use a script to check whether um, you can create your own script and then uh, use Bolt to run the script over. So what Bolt will do is that uh, it will copy the script over to the to the target nodes and then run the script uh, for you. At, at the end of the executions, uh, Bolt will delete the, the script at the target node. And again, that can be anything that the that the node can can execute. Um, so we're not limited to to languages here, other than anything that the uh, the remote end is is fluent in. Okay, so uh, I hope everyone's done. Um, so, um, so we've done with the checking the state of the compliance state of your Linux nodes. So next, uh, we're gonna do the same for Windows. And how are we, how we're going to do that for Windows is by running a plan. Uh, so a plan is a list of, uh, or rather sequence of tasks uh, it can run. So we've uh, created a plan for Windows to check whether it's uh, compliant or not. So um, so these two uh, uh, two commands actually gonna run uh, one plan and uh, one task. So it will do all the checks for all these uh, lists that you see on the screen. So let's uh, let's do that. Obviously, make sure you substitute in your your, your nodes uh, in place of those. Yep. Thank you. So, uh, so yeah, I uh, will change the nodes to the Windows node that I'm assigned to. So this will be secure bolt win zero. And for each one of you, it will be specific uh, Windows node that you'll be targeting. You can actually just use the because we've got aliases set up in the um, uh, yeah. in the inventory. You can actually just say win. Windows, right? Uh, I think it's just win, but you might want to double check. Uh, That's yeah, it's win. It's working for me. I'm win. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oops. Inventory. In, oh yeah, it's a uh, win. You're right. We gotta copy paste again. Um, copy. Okay. 
So uh, yes, let me change the target to win. The alias. So run out compliance, prep the windows. Uh, so run a couple of like uh, PowerShell scripts, uh, commands. Loading stuff. Okay, what does is um, it's getting DSC modules and installing stuff. Okay, so uh, we've done the plan to prep the windows for the task. Um, so next is uh, we gonna actually run the password to check whether it's at least uh, seven, the password age. So we go here, target windows. All right, so you'll be able to see that the uh, password history, password age maximum set to 42. So these are the poll, password policies that you can see uh, when you run this uh, task. I believe this is a PowerShell command. Done. So uh, let's move on to the next one. So uh, we've done the first task, uh, which is the, to check the state of the compliance for both Linux and Windows. And we see how we can use both uh, command, both tasks, and both plans, and how we can actually use those in conjunction with uh, you know PowerShell uh, bash scriptings as well as uh, inline commands to check the compliance. So for the task, the second task is uh, we're going to see how we can automate the remediation of those non-compliant settings. Um, so um, like uh, just now, at the previous task, you discovered that um, on your Linux nodes, all the settings uh, except for the FTP must be fixed. Uh, because the FTP is, is not installed, but the rest of it, uh, it's non-compliant, so you will we will need to fix it. Right, so uh, similarly for Windows, all the settings except for the password complexity uh, must be fixed as well. So uh, we need to fix all these uh, settings and controls. So how do we do that? Um, then we're going to go and do the, the exercise number five, which is to fix the settings for CIS controls by using both. All right. So, um, so this is quite uh, straightforward. Um, so because uh, we want to change the bootloader permission to 600, so we just like run a ch change mode uh, 066 and change this uh, file, configuration file on our Linux nodes. And yeah, we are also going to run a script to set the minimum password age to seven days, so from zero to seven. So uh, let's let's do that now. I'm just gonna run it. That's two. So Oops. Yep. Um, X. So this will execute this command on your Linux node. So yeah. Uh, it is successful. Uh, you can ignore the error because 
this uh, just a local um, warning. Let's see. So uh, we've managed to change the the permission. So next one is uh, we're gonna set the minimum possible age to seven days. So if we go to here, I think we don't run it first. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the script itself. That in pass. So it's actually uh, it's gonna change the the value from zero to seven, so that you meet the compliance. So this is what the script is actually doing on your Linux. All right. So if we run this. Uh, again, like uh, what Tony has mentioned, uh, it's not just a, like a shell script. Uh, we can also do um, like any programming language as long as you have the compiler uh, in your notes. So if you run this, uh, it will change the password minimum age from zero to seven. Yeah, and as you can see, it's a successful run. So let's uh, do that for the rest engagement. Nice. Yeah, so uh, you can verify using your previous commands just to make sure that uh, you know the bootloader permissions have been changed to six zero zero as well as the checking the minimum password age. That's now it's uh, set at seven instead of zero. Using the commands that we we ran for the exercise number four. So I hope everyone's done with the, this exercise to fix or rather remediate the settings for CIS on Linux nodes. So next, uh, we're going to do the same, but this time is for Windows. Uh, so this is for Windows. Uh, we're going to run a bold task, which is to enforce the minimum password running to 14. So I'll share my screen. And we'll run this command. And So uh, this task is basically a PowerShell script wrap and um, with uh, added metadata to describe like, uh, what the script is all about, uh, that the task is all about, uh, you know, the inputs, uh, the parameters, and all that. So um, here we can see that now the minimum password length is set to 14. Yeah, minimum password has been set to 14. So uh, so you can use the previous uh, exercise commands to check whether um, the minimum password has been set to 14, but um, yeah, it's basically, it's, it's already listed it up here. So you don't need to use the previous one. Yeah, so um, that's for the exercise number five. Um, so, uh, so far we have done the first two tasks, which is the first one is being the checking for the, the compliance state. Second one, we are, we are doing the uh, remediations on both uh, Linux and Windows. So the third one, uh, final one is we gonna find a more automated way to fix those non-compliant settings because we don't wanna keep like running the commands manually 
and you know it, it at at that kind of rate uh, it'll take uh, quite a long time to achieve your CIS compliance state and we need some sort of like a ready-made out-of-the-box automation modules uh, so that we can fix the rest of the CIS controls because uh, CIS like uh, for Windows L1 there's about like 270 to 300 uh, controls for Linux there's about like 250s so uh, we, you, we want to find a more uh, easier or automated way to uh, you know, address those compliance. So uh, finally, the, the last exercise, exercise six, and we will fix uh, the CS controls by using Puppet Code and the uh, Forge content. So you can like uh, go over to the forge.puppet.com and then download about like, uh, there are more than 6,500 modules. Uh, we have a lot of integrations with like uh, other uh, major vendors out there, like ITSM and you know uh, like tools like CI/CD tools and and also we have content for CI controls, uh, especially for uh, Linux and Windows. So um, yeah, so first off, we uh, can go over to uh, forge.puppet.com, and for Linux, we can search for CIS like then. Um, you can tell that uh, once you open forge.com, there are a lot of like uh, modules or other content that's related to CIS. But in this particular uh, exercise, we like to zoom in to the first module, which is uh, secure uh, underscore CIS underscore sorry secure underscore Linux underscore CIS. So this particular module has both the puppet code and bolt plan, and it has the ability to fix uh, almost all of the CIS controls, at least uh, L1 which is about like 220 controls. Um, but for Windows, you want to search for a module called uh, Hardened Windows. Um, and this, uh, you know, some of the modules that uh, allows you to harden your Windows um, nodes. So for this exercise, uh, we'll just use only some of the code, uh, not everything from these modules in the interest of time. So um, yeah, so first off for the Linux, we're going to run a bold plan to fix uh, the CS control. So as you can see, we have a uh, Linux bolt plan. So, so what this does is basically it's uh, making sure that uh, the, the NTP server is pointing to uh, these two particular uh, time servers. Uh, you, we will have to change the nodes to our um, your student number or other uh, the, the Linux node that we have been assigned to. So I'll just do this one. So I'm server. So I'm just gonna run this. So instead of uh, bolt windows, so it will be secure bolt uh, mix zero that uh, classroom dot puppet. Oh, for me. So what this does is it will run the secure Linux the CIS uh, module and you know allows us to set the time servers and for this particular we only uh, interested in one node which is the secure bolt uh, next zero so uh, click enter and it will run the secure Linux it will install puppet agent and get effects on this uh, Linux box. It'll take quite a while. So, um, so what it does now is installing Puppet Agent and, and it's trying to gather facts. So now it's uh, applying the catalogs of instructions to set the time servers to these two NTP servers. And once it's done, uh, we'll see the result that um, it uh, should be a success.
Great. So um, yeah, so it managed to finish the plan and managed to um, you know making sure that uh, the time servers is set to this uh, to NTP servers. So we'll just go back to the slides again. Um, so that's for Linux. Uh, what about for Windows? Uh, Windows, we can do the same. Uh, we just need to run bolt apply. Um, we'll apply. We'll apply this uh, puppet code settings to uh, ensure that uh, some kind of like account lockout settings to be enforced. So uh, we'll just run that one. So apply. Again, uh, what it does is uh, it's going to install Puppet Agent and it will get our facts on the uh, Windows machine. And it will apply the account lookout settings uh, to ensure that uh, it's compliant to the CIS benchmark for Windows. So if you look at the code for the uh, con local settings, uh, uh, so, uh, what it does is uh, it uh, setting up some security policies uh, like a local operation. Um, you know, uh, lockout threshold and resetting the account lockout after a couple of tries. Okay, so uh, the ball applies as the uh, command has finished and uh, it's successful. So basically what it does is uh, it applies all those security policies on your Windows node. Uh, again, coming back uh, to the uh, stop sharing uh, screen. So where are we now? So it's S six secure windows. So yeah. Um, all right. So uh, you can run the checks from exercise four to ensure that the root login and you must settings stuff fixed already. Uh, you can do so, or um, yeah. Uh, so basically, that's uh, the end of uh, the exercises so far. So we have uh, what we cover so far is uh, introduction to Bolt, and then um, we have run through how you as a sys admin you can use Bolt to check the state of your compliance using Bolt on both Linux and Windows. And you can use Bolt to um, automate the uh, remediation. Or rather, you can use Bolt to fix those remediations. And then lastly, you can you know, use Bolt in a more automated way by using Puppet Code so that uh, it's uh, more um, easier to manage. Right. So um, so what we have done so, to, so far today, we have installed Bolt. We have created a Bolt projects from GitHub. Um, we have used Bolt to automate the checking, uh, rather the combined state of your systems. We have run like uh, Bolt commands, command lines like uh, your shell, uh, like your bash shell commands, as well as PowerShells. We have run like uh, uh, bash scripts, and, and then uh, we've run like puppet Bolt tasks and with Bolt to fix the settings for a couple of uh, CS controls. And we have also searched uh, the forge for content such as the, the CIS, secure Linux CIS, as well as the um, windows that will be hardened windows. And we fix uh, more CIS control settings by running a bolt plan that we have downloaded from the forge and pop-up code from the forge. 
So um, the next uh, steps will be uh, uh, at the end of this uh, session, uh, we'll send you the recording for today's workshop uh, by email. And yeah, please complete the survey and you can also join our community on Slack. So this is the, uh, the Slack address. Um, you can also check up uh, our upcoming events, uh, this uh, puppet.com slash events. Or uh, we also provide uh, several like uh, learning content that allows you to um, understand how Puppet works, uh, Puppet Enterprise, uh, Bolt, and all other Puppet uh, offerings at uh, learn.puppet.com. Um, yeah, you can get in touch with us. Uh, so this is my email address, and that's uh, Tony Green's email address. So yeah, any uh, question and answer? Um, any questions uh, so far? Um, um, can't see the Google Sheet handout. Uh, um, well, well, sign in to you. The workshop. Uh, thank you, um, everyone. So um, yeah, so that uh, that's about it for the how you can use Puppet Bowl to automate your CS compliance. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like, are there any questions? Um, uh, uh, just want to open up for more questions. Doesn't just have to be about the uh, the CIS stuff, or you know, just Bolt in general, or even Puppet stuff. I would say life advice, but you probably don't want to take that from us. So Brian, um, to answer your question, what's the, the best practice for creating separate Bolt users for running Bolt commands? That's a really good one. Um, it really depends what you're gonna be doing and how you're gonna be using Bolt. Um, historically, what I've what I've recommended, especially if you're, you're looking at sort of more application um, orchestration is to set up sort of service accounts for those users, uh, for, for those accounts that are, that are specifically tied to what you're trying to do with the accounts um, that have all of the right permissions. Obviously, you don't want to be uh, getting in the habit of having people executing all these commands via sudo as root or, or as administrator through, uh, through WinRM. Um, so it really does depend. Obviously, there is a, a strong argument to be able to have, you know, potentially the the sort of either senior operations team or someone similar to to have access to to be able to run break glass stuff um, in an emergency as a as an elevated administrative user. But in general, we'd follow sort of least privilege um, RBAC principles and using the um, uh, inventory file, you can map those pretty easily. Okay, um, so uh, thank you everyone. Uh, if there's no questions, then uh, we'll end the session. Thank you. Thanks everyone.